7 o'clock, <coughs> close enough, we'll uh, call this meeting to order. There's a few changes in the agenda with the board's uh, agreement. We're going to move number 11, that's the uh, drainage projects, up to 3A, right after uh, uh, sustainable. Sustainable. Okay. I th uh, and seven. I oh, know. Uh, I guess that's six. That's it. Postponed. Six and six has been postponed until the next meeting. That's the liquor license, he license hearing. Uh, Move to accept the agenda. As amended. As modified. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Uh, Walk-in period. Before we start the walk-in, before I ask for walk-ins, at, at the last walk-in or the walk-in before, uh, Mr. Paley brought up a question about the uh, CPC funds and the, uh, particularly the ball field, uh, behind us, the softball field, whether it was legal uh, to build the field there because of uh, uh, CPA regulations. We sent his request to town council in town council, after researching it, uh, along with uh, John Bullman, chairman of the CPC committee, uh, came to the conclusion that it was that it was legal and that the ball field could proceed. So I just want to, since that was brought up under other business, I want to report to it on other business. Norman. Some, fine, you know, and that's where things like this usually end up in the in the in the courts. Two attorneys. Two attorneys. Have to present it somewhere else. Yep. So, thank you. Uh, any other walk-ins? Next is the accept the gift sustainable situate Lisa Thompson Thomas. Excuse me, Lisa. Could you come up and just, sure. if you don't mind? I don't mind. You don't mind my son's coming with. No, I'd love to see them. No, nope, we'd love to see them come up here. Teaching them the process. And maybe we could get uh, get their names, too. Sure. Um, this is my son. You want to say your name? Matthew. Kyle? Mm -hmm. Nice to see you both. <laughs> Thank you for coming. Thank right. you. And my name is Lisa Thomas, and I'm here tonight as a citizen of Situate, a parent, a PTO co-president at Hadley School, and a recent member of Sustainable Situate. Um, sustainable Situate is a group of concerned Situate residents who are trying to help the environment. Our goal is to create a more sustainable environment by working with our state and local agencies and by heightening awareness in our community through our in environmental initiatives. So I'm here tonight about one of those initiatives. Because I have my two sons, I spend many nights and weekends on the ball fields in town. And I grew really tired of seeing our public trash bins overflowing with the plastic sport and water bottles. After about a year of some planning and applying for grants, but unfortunately with the state budget cuts, those were not available to our town, I finally met up with Al Bangert. I approached Al this past winter, and he has been a real force behind helping me get these recycle bins in our town. We came up with a plan that if I could raise half the funds through private donations, the town would help pay for the other half, dispose the recyclables, and then store the bins during the winter months. Until the bins had arrived, the town was actually paying to have this hauled away, so our hopes are now that we have the opportunity to sell it and make some money instead. We easily reached our donations of getting 30 bins sponsored, so our group is here tonight to present the town with a check for $3,000. The donations that Sustainable has collected in working with Al and the transfer station, we are now proving that our town is trying to be more environmental, as well as setting a good example for our children. The donors the, are receiving a donated by sticker and I've placed them on the bins throughout our town. So they receive, you know, acknowledgement for what they've done. Um, I have a list of the donors. If any of you are interested, I brought some copies or I can email it to you as well. But basically, it's a lot of our local sports um, groups in town have come forward, businesses, and even private families, and especially through the Sustainable Situate group. I can't tell you guys, it, was, it took me three weeks to get these 30 bins sold. And I have a small wait list and a lot of people who say they'd be interested. So I think we'll you know, test out the first round. You'll see them all over town. They're on the sports fields. They're coming to the beaches when the town's ready. And um, some playgrounds have them too. 
So that's why I'm here tonight, and we're really excited to get this going with the town. Yeah, we're excited to, to, to hear that story, actually. That's, that's not the, it's kind of a fun story, right? It's not the usual story that comes before <laughs> us, during walk-in especially. Well, especially this uh, time of year, I know it's been tough with all the budget things. No, that's, that, that's, that's a good news story. I, I'm, I'm dead serious. That's, that's uh, not the type of story we hear. So I just opened it up to the board just for comments. I think this is fantastic. W way to go. Thank you for uh, also working with Mr. Banger and, uh, you know, 50 50 it and also all the people that donated. Um, this, is, this is great stuff. Yeah, we're really as you excited. Know. Yeah. I agree, and I, I see them at the Little League Field. I, I'm out there quite a bit, and people are using them, which is even more of a benefit. They're always full, and, and people are, there's, it's usually right next to a trash can, and people are being conscious enough to put it in the right bin. So thank you for uh, pushing them that direction. Well, it, it, you know, it goes without saying. Lisa, Kathy, others, you know, and, and Kyle and Matthew, it's, it's a great opportunity and a great thing you're doing. You're cleaning up situate and making it a nicer place for the town. And um, you're also setting an example for, for other kids, other people, and, and frankly, grown-ups. So I commend you all. And also, Al, thank you for, uh, for doing it because I know it's a partnership that obviously between the two, um, by raising money, it helps because of the financial situation, but also it's a commitment by the town to, to help out. And that's what this is supposed to be, a partnership. So, Lisa, thank you. Finally, thank you. <laughs> you know, I know, I know what it takes. You know, you're, you're the one in charge and do it all. And yeah, maybe the uh, boys' teachers will recognize their efforts and maybe get a little extra credit or something on the project <laughs> for what they learned. You know, just before you leave, this is a, probably a perfect example of, of what was, was touched upon in the past and, and what is going to become more and more important, more and more evident. And that's a, the private resident, the citizen of Situate, working with the town. Because we we're seeing in the last year or so, the money is just not going to be there. It's, it's you know, for the town to, to do a lot of things that, that they've done in the past. And this is a perfect example. Uh, and there are other examples on the beaches and, and, and uh, where, where residents are stepping up to the plate and recognizing the fact that you know, they, you know, it's a 50-50 proposition, and, and uh, public part, public partnership with private individuals is just, it's the way of the future. Uh, so let me ask you one question, sure. and this was brought up at a meeting I attended last night. I know it's at the ball fields, we'll see them at the ball fields, and Tony was really instrumental in, in, in getting more trash barrels up there in, in recyclable bins. Uh, during the summer months, when some of the fields aren't used, could those, your barrels be, be moved to the beaches? Absolutely. I think the town is going to be the best judge of that, and I trust them with it. Mm -hmm. that, um, we had come up with a plan that, like you said, they're located next to all of our public trash bins. Yeah. So no department has to, worker has to go and, and make an extra pickup for them. Mm -hmm. right. But I agree with you. You're certainly going to find that maybe there's certain places that aren't as busy in our summer months and where other areas are. The marina down near the harbor master. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's areas of this town that are really going to pick up. So I have no would leave that leave that up to Al Absolutely. then to, to, right you, to make the I, mean, I trust the, the town to know where they'd be needed. Make that determination. Sure. Yeah, that was that was brought up and, and it made that a lot of be. sense. So, mm -hmm. and now they're you. saving some for the beaches right now, but they probably could use at least two at each beach. Yeah, I'm sure, probably so. could. Yeah, and as you noted, it's critical to have them right next to the regular trash cans, not only from DPW's perspective, but for the user's perspective, because right. they're not going to want to yep. go across the street to go. That's, to that's right. right. Mm, motion. Uh, yes, motion. Well, maybe motion. Go ahead. Uh, Move the Board of Selectmen accept on the town's behalf a gift of $3,000 from Sustainable Situate for the purchase of recycled bins for Situate's beaches, athletic fields, and playgrounds. And further, that the Board thanks Sustainable Situate and all those who have supported their considerable efforts. I'll second that. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Well, maybe John Danny. Maybe we can get a, a TV. But John, can you go out in front here and accept sure. that check? Sure. From, Thank you. From the boys or from Lisa or... What up, guys? Know, what, what up, guys? Boys love this, don't you, huh? <laughs> All your pals going to see you on TV. Yeah, just what you'd hope would happen. Now, turn around the other way. Turn, turn, turn that Camera's way. up there. That's it. <laughs> Hold on. Let Dad take a picture. Let Dad take a picture here if we can't. Maybe. John, get out of the picture. John, just wait, wait, wait a second to see if we can't get a picture.
Great. There we go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Three thousand dollars. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. That's, that's Three thousand. That's great. <laughs> Thanks, Lisa. Thank uh, you. The next agenda number four is a uh, dis a discussion and possible. Uh, we'll, we'll do 11. We'll do Al. Al, let's come up. Thank you. Thank you, Tony. We'll do 11. Thank you for rearranging your schedule. That's well, we understand you have a conflict. You have another meeting to go to right I after this. Be, I want to be up here asking yep. to spend money immediately following that presentation. I missed it. That's what that was all about. Um, I've, I've got a topic here to ask that you award a contract for three drainage projects in Situate. Um, these three projects are, well, the first one is on Tristan Road up in the Indian Winds, Indian? Indian Trail. Indian Trail area, uh, where the, we have a large pond that forms after heavy rains. It's been a, it's been a long-standing problem and we have a solution for it. The second one is a drainage situation on the Greenfield Lane, uh, where we have a low-lying area that collects water. We have to come up, we've, we've come up a way to, uh, to uh, responsibly get rid of that water and improve the road's uh, capability there. And then on Hadley Road, north of the corner of Gannett, uh, basically running from Gannett all the way through the golf, to the golf uh, country club's property, we've got a serious drainage problem there that's caused a major uh, breakdown of the road. Following the, that drainage improvement, we will then repave that road area. Um, the bids we received for these three pieces of work ranged from $130,000 to $296,000. Um, our engineering consultant checked the references and financials of the apparent lowest bidder, uh, Mass Reclamation of Hanover, with whom we've done work before and we're pleased with his work. And we recommend to you through Mr. Agnew that the selectmen award the construction contract to Mass Reclamation for $130,000, $130,245. Uh, this is funded by our Chapter 90, uh, and actually we are, in this case, uh, able to almost uh, triple our Chapter 90 money uh, because what we've got is uh, we've received uh, grants called 319 grants to do drainage work in other parts of the town, and we have to do some in-kind work in order to obtain the two-thirds funding from the 319 grants. So this is our, by doing this with our, our Chapter 90 money, we're able to then take advantage of those other monies for other drainage projects that have been identified, and in fact, some of which are underway already. Uh, once you award this contract, work can, be win can begin within the next 45 days, and we will be completed before the late fall. Thank you, Al. Uh, I, I, I'm not going to ask any questions, keeping in mind that you do have a 7 o'clock meeting down at the GAR Hall, so uh, I just remind everyone of that. It, comments or questions? None. 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 Motion. Will the support a second vote to award the contract for the drainage improvements to Hadley Road, Greenfield Lane, Tristing Road, contract number 09-HW-02 to Mass Pavement Reclamation, Inc. of Hanover, Massachusetts, for the total bid price of $130,245, the payment to be made at the unit prices and or lump sum prices pending receipt of certification of insurance, 100% performance bond, 100% labor and materials bonds as well. I'll second that. Motion's been made and seconded. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, Al. <coughs> uh, next item is uh, back to item number four, discussion and vote in school bus advance from the school department, Paul Donlin. Yes, I, Mr. Norton, Mr. Chairman. How are you, sir? I'm very good. Good. How are you all? Glad, Paul, thank you. Um, as you all know, we started this process probably, what, October of last year. Uh, we really weren't going to put anything into the capital plan. Um, we came to the meetings and we found out that there was a little possibility of some money, so we did put in with a trade-off that we had for the bus garage uh, for $150,000, we were going to trade off for a new bus and a couple of new vans because we have our bus mechanics down off of the driftway in a, uh, in a garage now. So, 
So we did that. We came in front of you guys, uh, actually in front of the uh, Long Range Capital Plan. And what we're looking for and what was approved at that meeting was, and we had, at, at town meeting was one bus and two vans. Now we also understand that the times have changed significantly since October, November, and April 13th town meeting. So what we're here in front of you now is for approval to go out uh, to uh, purchase these vans. Uh, per the capital plan and get the bonding in place or whatever we need to do whether we're going to pay for it or I'll bond it one of the one or the other and I gave you a, um, a list of what we we're planning on doing I gave you a list of all of our vehicle data all of our up-to-date mileage um, we currently have 19 buses um, 18 standard buses which holds about 70 kids and one handicap with a wheelchair access lift Nine are 2004 or newer, four are 2001, two are 1999, and four are 1998. Two of the 1998 buses are unreliable should be, and should be removed from the fleet, so we really have 17 reliable buses. Uh, currently, we're operating about 14 buses on a daily basis. Uh, however, at least two more are forever are going on on different activities during the day. Uh, we're running basically 16 during the day, which leaves us with one or two spares at all times. <coughs> um, we need a minimum, we believe, of 18. We want to scrap two of them, uh, as you see on my list back here. We want to get rid of uh, two 1998s. And we'll run with 18, which leaves us hopefully with one very reliable uh, spare uh, to be able to handle everything that we need to do. Um, we're also asking for two new passenger vans. Currently, we have five eight passenger vans and three handicap accessible vans uh, with the, uh, the chair lifts on them also. Uh, we have two 2000 on the eight passenger vans, two, two 2007s, one 2005, one 2000, and one 1999, which is a spare. Uh, they were operating daily. Um, it's cheaper for us to operate these with our own personnel and to go out and get um, uh, a contract uh, service for the type of things that we need to do for handicap. We are looking at a lot of those things uh, because we can't do them all. Some of the kids that uh, go to Watertown and, and, and the special education child, children that we have go diff different places. The 1999 is not considered reliable for daily service, so uh, we, need to, we need to basically take that one out of service. Um, the three handicapped vans operate, two operate daily, one's a spare, and we just got it back on Thursday, and actually I got a phone call from Cohasset, and Cohasset actually used that on Friday. Their, their handicap uh, van was out, so we actually do trade back and forth with, um, with Cohasset when we can. So um, that's what I'm asking for, and now I guess what we need to do is whether we can afford to do this or not do this. So. And I know, Mr. Norton, uh, you uh, basically are asking everybody that had parts of the capital plan to come in front of you guys and and ask. No, I think, I, well, well, I think, uh, yeah, we did. I think the yeah. board and myself and, and, and the rest of the board felt that that the whole budget situation for the state, for the town, for the schools, for everybody yep. is, is changing every day. And unfortunately, it's getting worse every day. And we kind of first saw that back in March. So that's why we said, even though things might be voted, when it comes time to actually voting to, to buy them, it may be a worse situation. So we asked people to come in and just so we could have time to reevaluate it. Yep. And, and uh, I think you, you hit it in the head. I mean, it's times have changed. It's, you know, it, it's, it's, it's the ways of the towns and situated in particular did business just capital plans and buying stuff, you know, are over. It's, mm -hmm. it's no question about that. And we've said it before, and it's redundant, and I know people don't want to hear it, but everything that comes before us is good. No one comes before us with a bad idea or to buy things. Everything's needed. I mean, it's, it's whether it be the vans, whether it be the drainage, whether it, it's all needed. But we're at a stage where, you know, you know better than anybody on your side of the, of, of the, the town, S teachers, school personnel are going to be cut in, in probably the largest number that we haven't seen this in a long time. In a long, long time, in 20, 30, 40, maybe. Probably, I, pro, beginning of Prop 2 and a half. Probably. So yeah. and even then, we did Prop 2 and a half, we didn't lose it this time. We, so uh, 
it's just it's different times now, and we're going to have to do business all, way differently than we've done in the past. Uh, that's that's all I'm saying. The only thing I'm trying to drive home every time someone comes in with, with the request and, and that it's we have to start thinking things aren't like they were. But anyway, I've said enough. Go ahead, anybody. H having heard that, Paul, and, and it's no it's no surprise to you. You still feel that you have to replace these vehicles. I mean, because I, yeah. it's all about public safety. It is know? about, you know, the two 1998s, we, we have got to, I can't run with 17. I can get by with 18. I have 19 now. I'm not going to, my plan is obviously to, to switch the older ones out every two years. But right. obviously, I think that's, we didn't get anything last year. We planned on getting two last year, and we were going to try for two this year. So in the, in the last two years, with the budgets being the way they are, and we see this, we're only asking for one in the two years that we're trying to, we've tried to scrap these other two guys out. Um, the vans themselves, we have taken an awful lot more in-house than rather than go contract out-house. We have a lot more control. Uh, we're forever uh, bringing the kids, uh, the, the students to uh, the beaches and, you know, to clean up the beaches and around the job sites around here in town and the hardware stair downtown town uh, with uh, Kevin, I don't know if you know Kevin's program. Um, Kevin runs a great program there. There's about, you know, eight, eight or ten adults that are, that are uh, older students that are going all different places. And so we're forever moving them around. Um, can we get by without anything like that? Obviously we'll have to if that's what we need to do. But um, we do need to replace these things and I know that everything is is tight the way that it is right now. So, John, Paul, I just had a few questions. Um, one is, I know that you're looking for the purchase of a new bus and and also the two passenger vans. What are we talking numbers wise? Oh, um, um, the bus is probably around seventy, and the two vans are probably around twenty-five, so maybe one hundred and twenty. Yeah. That leads me to the next question, which is, and I think you've kind of answered it, which is that this is projected for this year's coming fiscal year budget for FY10, right, Rick? Okay. And I guess I, I posed this to Chief Judge earlier. <laughs> I want $20,000 for a computer, so I, um, I want to raise it with you because obviously it's more significant. Is it possible that um, with what we have presently, okay, to continue to maintain the fear I would have is obviously if something goes down, then the next step would be for a short term, an interim of saying, okay, could we rent a bus for a short term? Because if a bus goes out of commission, I'm not saying we shouldn't spend the money for it, but I'm, I guess what I'm looking at is can we continue to run it, wear it down to the point for one more potentially holding off for another year? I, I voted for the bus. I, I, you know, last year when he came before us, we said no for the capital plan. This year I said yes, but because of the financial a forecast going forward right now, we're really kind of like in a state of limbo or a state of flux. I guess what I'm trying to say is, is there a possibility of just holding off? Let's see how this year bears out. Um, and if we're able to continue to work off the buses as they presently are constituted and the vans as they're constituted, fine. If, if there's an emergency, I'm more than prepared to say, let's tap into our stabilization fund. Let's, let's get the money we need to if there's an emergency. But I guess my position at this point is to say, let's hold off. Let's see how we go for the next few months. And then um, clearly the buses are a priority. I, I've said that. That's why I voted for it. But I guess I'm kind of inclined to say, if it's going okay right now, let's continue to see how it goes for the next few months. We're coming into the summer months now. And then if we really have an emergency, then we can we can – act on it. But I guess that's kind of the way I'm looking at it. It's the way I approached it with chief, the chief with the computers, and I'm, I guess I'm kind of looking at it in that vein. Um, not saying it's not worthy. I totally realize it. My kids get the benefit of it. But I'm just saying that I think from my position, because we're going to be looking at potentially people losing their jobs, mm -hmm. I guess my thoughts are um, if, we, if, if it's not desperate, I know the health and safety is an issue, but as you said, we can still continue to run right now. I don't think we're jeopardizing that. I, I'm inclined to say let's hold off now. I'm not saying to say absolutely no, but can we get through the next few months to see where we're going, especially in light of the fact that potentially we're going to lose jobs with teachers and or town employees? I can answer your very first question, which is rent a bus. I don't think you can probably go to Totman over here off the driftway and rent a bus. They would, probably wouldn't do that for us. But I probably could go to Cohasset and ask them if they got their spare for that time, if we needed to run a bus for a little bit of period of time. Okay. We're all, we've been talking back and forth about sharing costs. Good. 
you know, with Cohasset. Um, it's not a b- actually a bad idea. You're right. Um, That's a good idea. It's, a, it's, a, it's an idea that we've explored for quite a bit We're between Dave and myself over there. Um, can I get by with the, set, the 19 that I have? Yes, I can. I'm going to have to limp along with the 99s. I would much rather scrap them, um, but I can probably get by them. The handicapped vans, the vans, I would have to, that I can contract out. I can go to somebody else. I'm going to pay more money for that. Um, but I can do the longer runs. I would probably um, send off to Watertown and what have you on a contractual basis. The runs around town here um, for the um, you know for the job sites and what have you that we do, I could probably have the spare older vans, the eight passenger vans, handle that. But I can't send them to Whitman. I probably can't send that one to Rockland. Right. So could you um, go, go, could you get by with what sounds like you may be able to get by with one new van to take those long trips. Yeah, I could. Uh, yeah, all right. if we okay. could do something like that, I mean, we could definitely anything we can get at this point. In time, I know, I know. I realize uh, you're, you're, I, you're, you're, you're trying to cooperate. I, I am. And I'm not trying to say no to it. I'm, no, I, me, I, I I'm trying it. to say, okay, do I hedge my bet and say let's risk it to see if we can go without having to pay more money? Because I realize if you're going to have to loan or take a loan or, or, or take from Cohasset or something. We'll pr- pay more in the long run, but that's assuming that one breaks down, you have to do it. On the other hand, you hedge your bet and say, it's kind of like a lot of people with their old cars. Well, if it doesn't break, then maybe I don't have to go to the mechanic and I don't have to buy a new one or rent one or lease one and so on and so forth. So that's all I'm thinking yep. right yep. now. But and if I, there's absolutely a need for certainly one or something, it's, <clears throat> believe me, anything with, with disabilities, I'll, I'll support it and we'll get if, it. If we didn't have the, the bus garage off the driftway, I would say probably not. Okay. That we we need it now, but That's we've fair. got that over there. Yep. And if I need to put a rear end in a bus, I can go down that garage safely now and do that. But thank you. That's very fair. I appreciate Tony. that. Yeah, just a, a couple quick um, comments. The these uh, purchases were passed at town meeting, and they were are being paid for with previous articles. Mm-hmm. So this isn't coming out of new new no, borrowing, okay. but it is money. As right. Joe has mentioned, yep. that's money that you could get and, and put to something else if you needed to. Um, so it would never come out of the stabilization fund, okay. is my point, that I think, um, you know, if, if it came to the point that we had to do it, it would always come from those articles. Um, the question I had was, what is the turnaround time in having to buy one of these? How long? If you bought a bus, you could maybe buy one right off the lot. You may not get every bells and whistles that you, that you need. But you could probably have it pretty delivered probably within, you put the specs out, put a bid opening out, and you might grab, the, you know, the one that's on the lot, maybe a little bit lower. So maybe. it's a short time period. It could be a very so short time period. to John's period. point, if we can, if you ran into an emergency, I mean, what I hate to see you do is lease stuff in a budget that you don't have the money to pay for the lease. Correct. So you'd hate to not add an expense to it when it's really a capital item. But to John's point, if we can get through, and if we have an emergency, then you come before us. You can borrow one from somebody else for a limited period of time, and then we could we could vote again and see if we had to buy one. But until we get to that situation, it may make sense to hold off, and maybe we can get through another year. Also, have you taken into account any trade-in value on those, or do they have none? Yeah, at this point in time, you know the uh, the seventies are over. You know no, nobody's buying the buses anymore to drive up to Woodstock. <laughs> There's a family, oh, Partridge, a isn't it? No, wait a minute. Which, Partridge uh, family. No, they were, we, we used them here. We'll, um, we'll um, strip them down and we'll do whatever we can to take everything off parts, of them. Yeah. And we'll, uh, the shell will get crushed. So we'll, it'll be metal value. Rick, Pine oh. Hills needs one, right? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Rick. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I'm not this is sort of a question, <laughs> question, to, question to Tony. Um, because this comes from previously passed warrant articles, how much leeway is there? I mean, to Tony and Rick, how much leeway is there in the particular articles from which you were going to take the monies for this? Were the previous articles for school buses, or were they for for school? Um, uh, improvements. Improvements. I mean, could they? Okay, so they could go to some other things for for schools. I have to, I have to read the article again because I think it was a borrowing article. Yeah. Okay. I'm not sure. Could I mean, couldn't you go to town meeting again and, and get it put back to the general fund? Sure. Yeah. yeah. So you you could use well, those. Yeah, you could. If, unless it was a borrowing article. Yeah. Unless it's already been borrowed. Yeah. 
Okay. No. I'm inclined to say, I, I, I just want to, can I just go right ahead, Rick, sure. Thing, um, yeah. Just so we don't all forget it, Paul alluded to it before, where I said, this will be the second year we haven't bought a bus. Right. We mm -hmm. have had, one of the reasons we've had buses that have been in good condition is because we had a program of buying two new buses every year. Just like we do with the cruisers, we buy a certain number, I think three every year. So the equipment's always in, in, in good shape. This being the second year, what's going to happen next year? And I mean, pretty soon we're going to end up having to go and buy five buses. But uh, but also, Rick, I mean, and I agree. We bought two every year. We bought two police cars every. But you know, those were in good years. The times are. It's night and day now. It's just what was done five years ago cannot be done now, and it won't be done next year either. I don't disagree with you. Know, you know, it's. Let me well, just, I, I mean, that's the question. Can we, can we I mean, inspecting if I could, my car and inspecting a school bus are two different things. Uh, absolutely. Just, let me continue if I could. I was going to, um, Rick, Rick made the same point I was. I'm inclined to support this. I mean, I agree completely with what you guys are saying, it's, and it's interesting. But I'm inclined to support this one as, as first requested, not just necessarily for this year, but for the, the downstream impacts. If we don't do it this year, what this would mean for next year and the following years. So. I'm kind of on the fence. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I absolutely see the point. You know, let's limp along if we can. But the money's already in there, so it's not new borrowing. It's not new can borrowing. I, and then also see what just, it is. Wait, so Rick, and I'm, I'm just worried about make, the downstream. Let me make one suggestion. One thing we could do, I mean, we could buy a bus and buy a van for those long yeah. trips and limp around with the, sh with the other van. And that's one alternative. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one and one. I mean, yeah, something like that. But I'm just throwing that out. Rick, I'm sorry. Yeah. That was my suggestion is if I want to hold up on the second van. Yeah. Or you can even hold up on the bus if you really felt you had to until until at least we get a budget <clears throat> from the state, you know, which could be two months from now, could be a month from now. Here's a, here's a question for you. What happens procedurally? Because, um, Paul, you write, um, you know, we've got, this is for SPED students and so on and so forth. Um, and we have a certain number. What happens if we have a dramatic decrease in the number of special ed kids? What happens to the vans? I would probably like use farm them out with Cohasset, or how does it go? I, I could do things like that. I could, but I would more than likely would uh, get rid of my contract services that are taking some of the other uh, children further, and I would I probably take it take more in house. I see. Okay. We, we started the program a few years back of taking. We used to do it all contract out. Yeah. There's very few uh, vans. We started the program of two vans per year and, you know, the buses yeah. and so on and so forth. We brought an awful lot of that in-house. Yeah. It's cheaper. It is yeah. much cheaper. Right. Um, I'm good with one and one yeah. I mean, something along those lines. Before we, ground. before I, we. I mean, I, I, I could table this, guys, until September if that's what you guys want to do, too. I mean, you want to come uh, back? I can come back in August. I, I'd be, I think my thought is. You know, uh, maybe we'll have a better number then. I mean, I'm not. Uh, no, Still I, gonna I, need it. I think I am um, going to need it definitely. I, I'm, I'm happy to say you definitely need one for the the van for handicap uh, or disabilities. I'm happy to say get it now. Um, okay. I guess my the thing I'm just cautioning is that if a bus came up, you need it. I'm happy to vote for it. Okay. I guess my thought is, can we just hold off and reserve it? If you come back in September, September and say, look, it, we need it, or, or October. Paul, I'll vote for it. I'll, 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 that's not going to be the issue. I just I'm holding off, saying, do we necessarily have to spend it at this moment? But I will vote for it. That's that, that's my ultimate uh, no, position on it. Is there any money in the revolving fund for the setup for the for the vans that could be used for purchase? Uh, revolving funds of what type of revolving funds you're talking about? Well, this, for the, the transportation. transportation. I think that's just enough to pay for the. Well, the I know we set that up at a time when gasoline and, and diesel oil was through the roof. Now it's it's <laughs> less than half of that amount. But we're still funding it, I believe, at that level. I'm just wondering if there was any excess money in that account that could be put. I have to. I have to spend that money by June 30th of every year. It's one of those revolving accounts that I typically have. I have to spend by year end. Norman, I don't know whether I can buy a van out of that money or not. I mean, I'll investigate that. I, I, how how the uh, revolving fund was set up, it was prior to me. Uh, I don't know. Um, typically, what we do is we use that for our, our driver's salaries, um, and we. Uh, so I, I will look at that. Uh, 
entertain a motion if anyone one second Joe one one piece of the puzzle that you know Paul said it but it is it will have an effect on how long our buses last and that's if the guys have a garage to work out if they're no longer working outside mm -hmm. so we should see buses last longer we will I, well the buses are still outside that's right but the, they're <laughs> still able getting to the do, salt there that's here right. we are that's closer right. to the ocean talking to someone who does that Paul so <laughs> you know, right so these guys inside can do brakes and tires yes, and everything can. else and make things last a little bit longer but I do see where you know the majority of the board is coming from that uh, maybe there's a middle ground here and if the turnaround time is quick in a month you can have it I you know I don't Hmm. Motion, uh, comments? If no comments, a motion. I move that the Board of Selectmen vote to release funds for the purchase of one new passenger van for the Citra uh, Public Schools. And just on that alone. So one van. Correct. Is Thank there a second? You. Second. With the idea, and Paul, you know you can come back here mm -hmm. in August, September. It's not the end of the world. And nope. Correct. Okay. Then a motion and a second. Discussion? I mean, the only... The only fear would be that all of a sudden the state budget comes in lower than we want and we need this $100,000 to fund our operations. And that could happen. Right. That right. could happen. And I think that's, everyone's aware of that. That's, it's, that's where we're in, you know, right now. You're absolutely right. Yes, Who knows right. what the... Right now. Well, the motion is one van. One van. For handicap accessibility, I want to modify that. With, with the understanding that down the road, uh, late, later this summer or early September, Paul when might, you need it, if you, if you run into a, a situation. Paul might be back. Uh, motion's been made and seconded. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Paul, thank you. And thank, you, you for, thank you for your understanding, too. Uh, number five. Discussion and bond anticipation note from the treasurer collector, Ms. Lopato. Good evening. Good evening. Um, we had a sale yesterday of two bond anticipation notes. One was a $325,000 taxable renewal. Um, that came in at 2.49%. Uh, it is taxable again, so, uh, but it's still a pretty good rate. The other one, which was a combination of some maturing bands, uh, or one maturing band from last June, as well as some new money that I added into it, that came in at 1% with a net interest cost of 0.59. 0.59. Uh, so. Free money. Yeah. How much was that note, Jane? Um, the Four second one was 4182 at 1% with the net interest cost because there's a premium on that of 0.5933. Wow. I mean, that's a great rate. I mean, you, you, what you lose, we said earlier today, what you lose on one hand with the interest rates that municipalities are getting, you, you gain a little bit on this end uh, when you get rates like this. This, uh, Tony? Th yeah, this may, we may want to revisit our interest expense in the budget for 2010 to see what we projected and what it, borrowing. It was yeah, definitely it was higher. It was 3%, yeah. it was, it was I think. Yeah. Right. Um, I'm just saying, when we start looking at all these other things. How much that's going to make a difference in a budget, I'm not sure, because this is only a band anyway, so there's no principal for them. And there's some enterprise um, fund money yeah. in But there. this is, but, this but is taking ban and putting it to long-term debt, though, right? Um, this isn't a not band. until March of 2009. It's so this is just another ban. So you're taking a, a ban and rolling it into Correct. another ban. Till the plan is to do the bond in March, Tony. And I'll be doing some additional borrowing um, before then with the plan that I'll do some interfund advanced borrowings to save some money along the way. But to Tony's point, I think, I think that I don't, I don't know. I don't have the figures of the budget as far as earned interest for, for 2010, what we budgeted, but. I don't know how much we budgeted and we, what we what rate we budgeted it at. Right, the rate we I think budgeted it was, three and was five. higher, um, definitely higher. Than, um, than, what, than reality, than right. what it is. Um, I did put some FY, some new FY10 um, items in there because they needed the money right away. So. Um, but I'm talking about the the interest earned for the town during 2011. Have we budgeted correctly? That's all I'm saying. Based on the fact that the interest rates have come down. Interest earned, interest, no, interest, interest, interest income. Yeah, expense. Income. We probably, we 
Oh. Adjusting that down. <laughs> yeah. Uh, As you get, yeah, okay. Yeah. Elijah, I'm sure you are. Yeah, okay. I think we're down 13% Yeah. Talk the top yeah. Rick? A uh, very quick question. It's actually not related to this, but I do see Stockbridge Road is written down here. What's the calendar for the Stockbridge Road, Maine? Roughly, ballpark. Do you remember? Okay, great, thanks. Yeah, and that money, that's just some front money for some engineering. Yeah, that's why, because I was wondering, because I thought it was coming up, and it's a small number, and so, okay, yeah, gotcha. Thank you. That's it for me, Mr. No Chair. Thank just you. my last point was if, you know, because what we are doing in the budget is we are decreasing the interest earnings right. in our numbers. Yeah. We should also look at our interest expense and see what sort of pickup there is there, right. because as, you know, they work opposite. So, um, so we budgeted three and five. If it's really one and three, then that may be. But, right. but well, again, there's several um, enterprise fund items in here. So it's right. not all general funds. Right. So. Further discussion? Norman, did you have a question? Yeah. Is this more? Because we do this every year. Is this more this year that we're borrowing? I don't have last year. This year, last year, it's about the same amount. Well, if you look at what was renewed, renewed was 2.3 million, and the new is 1.9. Okay, so yeah. uh, a little bit. Uh, I think it's around oh, two, around 2 million. I think is the last couple of years anyway. I think we in fact, you know, we try to limit. Uh, that was a capital plan, wasn't it? Uh, yeah. But I'm not done yet. This is. I mean, there's more right. projects. Yeah. These are the early stages of some of the projects. So I'll be coming back with more items mm -hmm. as we go as we start FY10. Um, Some of these projects, I might add, just my own my own observation, uh, we will, we'll be voting and we'll be funding. But if we had known then what we know now, we may not have been quite so quick to to vote these, myself included. I'm not, uh, you know. But anyway, that's just a comment. But the majority of the money is the the sewer. Yeah. You know, it's the water. Yeah. Excuse me, the water. The water mains. The water yeah. mains. Yeah. yeah. So of the 1.8 million, 1. 1.8 Three, four is water main. The water main. Legitimate. Yep. All right. Further discussion from the floor, from the board. Seeing none, I'll entertain a motion. Change you have vote. Red. Red, yeah. John has to read All this. Right. I get to read this. Tony, lucky me, huh? Yeah. Um, do I say voted or do I say I, 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 I motion to approve? I'm going to say motion to approve. That's what I thought. Okay. Uh, motion to approve the sale of four million one hundred eighty-two thousand dollars at one percent general obligation bond anticipation note, Series A's, uh, the Series A note of the town dated June nineteenth, two thousand nine, and payable March nineteenth, two thousand ten, to Jeffries and Company Inc. at par in accrued interest, if any, plus a premium of twelve thousand seven hundred fifty-six dollars. Second. Uh, discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, Aye. Uh, motion to approve the sale of $329,000 at 2.49% general obligation bond anticipation note. Series B of the town dated June 19, 2009 and payable March 19, 2010. The Series B note together with the Series A note. The notes to TD Bank, comma, N-A, at par in accrued interest, if any. Second. Uh, discussion? In all favor? Aye. 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 Motion that in connection with the marketing and sale of the notes, the preparation and distribution of a notice of sale and preliminary official statement dated June 3, 2009, and a final official statement dated June 8, 2009, each in such form as may be approved by the town treasurer, be and hereby are ratified, confirmed, approved, and adopted. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 A motion that the consent to the financial advisor bidding for the notes as executed prior to the bidding for the notes is here, um, is, is a um, motion to, uh, to be accepted. Second. <laughs> Uh, motion made to second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? 
Mr. Yamas. Uh, motion that the town treasurer and the board of selectmen be and hereby are authorized to execute and deliver material events, disclosure, undertakings in compliance with the SEC rule 15 small c 2-12 in such form as may be approved by bond council to the town, which undertaking shall be incorporated by reference in the notes for the benefit of the holders of the notes from time to time. Second. Uh, discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Aye for all the other votes, too, by the way, in case you didn't hear me. <laughs> I motion that each member of the Board of Selectmen, the Town Clerk, and the Town Treasurer be and hereby are authorized to take any and all such actions and execute and deliver such certificates, receipts, or other documents as may be determined by them or any of them to be necessary or convenient to carry into effect the provisions of the foregoing votes. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 And that is all for unanimous. Look what you Thank missed, you. Tony. Kim has um, the paperwork. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, we can. Much. There's quite a bit of it, but we're going to have to wait. Do you need it yeah, right uh, tomorrow morning? Yeah, in the morning and bring it to yeah. Okay, thank you. So we'll we'll sign those uh, after, after the meeting. Right. Okay. Uh, next item on, on the agenda is uh, number seven. And this is a discussion vote. Retail liquor license transfer of Front Street Gourmet Wine Experience 121 Front Street. <coughs> Would you mind coming up? Thank you. Nice to see you again. Hi, how are you? Good. Uh, just to bring everyone up to date, uh, a few weeks ago we heard about the, the transfer of the liquor license and the common liquor license in the establishment. Uh, right, how are you? And that's what we're doing here tonight. I guess attempted to do exactly that, transfer the liquor license to the common liquor license. So. For the record, my name is Brad Pinta. I represent yep. the selling party, which is Newton Beverage Shop, okay. Inc. And uh, Teresa Martini, the buyer. And, and her counsel couldn't be here tonight. He was ill. Mm -hmm. But I expressed to him the my thought that, that this should be, we hope, rather simple. We've complied with all of the uh, re requirements that you folks put on us last time. Um, and we're now ready to complete the, to, to start the, the transfer process. My understanding is that at the local level, uh, the transfer would then be approved by you folks, and then we, it goes on to the state. Exactly. And, and they yeah. do their, their next step. And during that interim period of time, uh, her counsel and myself have indicated we were going to sign all of our closing documents, hold them in escrow, uh, and wait for the state to give the final approval. That's our plan. Okay. We will. Um, do you have any questions for us at this point? Well, that's what I'm going to ask the board, starting over there with Rick. Do you have any questions? I'm all set. Tony? Now, this is just this is regarding the transfer of the liquor license. This is the first one. This is the uh, the all alcoholic right. beverage license. Yeah. Okay. yeah the, I mean, the only point that I'd bring up is obviously we were last time because of the violation from the previous owner. And, you know, you were working there, a manager at that time. So in my mind, I'm kind of considering that violation kind of under your watch, too. So this is... Um, you know, we, we've got to talk about what the, uh, what sort of guidelines we'll follow in the future. But, um, you know, I think we all feel comfortable that you're taking charge. But, but that again, in my eyes, is kind of on the establishment as it's being taken over. So, uh, that's the only point I have. Sean, and you plan to open or change right after you get the decision Correct. from the state? You plan on taking over? How long have you been working there? I started working there October of 2008. Okay. She was. She expressed to the board last time that she was trained by a national company, so she's very familiar with the liquor license and all kind of, all aspects of running uh, a liquor store and a, an establishment that mm -hmm. sells liquor. Uh, so she's very highly trained and qualified in this area. Right. John. Yeah. Uh, what does. T A M B C T Inc. That's what I was ask. stand for her initials. I assume my it's your son, initials. Oh, okay, oh. I'm just trying to figure out what the uh, thing is. No, I have no. I I, I agree um, with with Tony, and that is that obviously you know I'm holding you to the same standard uh, as if because you were there before. So um, don't expect to see any violations. Don't expect that, and I hope not to. Sorry. So I wish you well. And I kind of reiterate what Tony said and, and what John followed up on, just to the point where. We, we, we fully understand this new ownership. We fully understand you're starting 
so from, from one perspective with a clean bill of health, but it'd be very difficult for us to to overlook the fact that, that you were manager there before this violation. So I, I guess all I'm saying is you know what to do. Be really careful. So uh, questions from the board or any comments from the audience? Good luck. Is it saying a motion? Yeah, I move that the Board of Selectmen vote to grant the transfer of the retail all kinds of alcoholic beverages license held by Newton Beverage Shop, Inc., doing business as Front Street Gourmet Wine and Spirits to uh, TAMBTC, Inc., doing business Front Street Gourmet Wine and Spirits for the premises located at 121 Front Street, situate Massachusetts, consisting of one floor, one retail, and two storage rooms, a walk-in refrigeration unit in front and back entrance is an exit. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Now, this one should be easier. This is the, uh, <laughs> the common VIX license, so. Uh, Certainly shorter. <laughs> Certainly shorter. <laughs> Again, th th this is a uh, application for a common VIX license to go with the alcohol license, I guess, to sell food. Uh, motion. 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 Sean, Mr. Harris. Move the Board of Selectmen vote to grant a common VIC license to TAMBTC, -T Inc., doing business as Front Street Gourmet Wine Spirits, 121 First uh, Front Street, Central. I'll second that. Motion has been made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Good luck. Thank you. Good luck. Good night. Brad, good to see you. Good to see you. Uh, next item on the agenda is the uh, award bid animal shelter auction. This auction took place a couple of weeks ago. Uh, Rick? Uh, we had one bidder, which was uh, Jim McGinnis, and the bid was $262,200. So we recommend the Selectman award that auction bid to Mr. McGinnis. One question I have, has the uh, Frenzy Animal Shelter agreed to that yes. price? Uh, discussion? Just just maybe to, to say where we got here, that the, the town voted at an annual town meeting to give the proceeds of this sale to the animal shelter. Um, so really, it's not, none of it's going to come to the town, never, none of it was going to come to the town, regardless of the purchase price. So um, what we did is work on an agreement with the animal shelter. Um, group to have um, somewhat of a, a stake in the in the building and property over there, but um, in terms of the the number, it was irrelevant from the town's perspective. What uh, or in terms of what money the town would get as to what the figure was. So, uh, having said that, a motion made. Move that the board of selectmen vote to award the auction bid to the high bidder James McInnes for $262,200 for the property located at 61 New Driftway, Situate, Massachusetts. Uh, second. 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 Before we vote discussion, so, Clark. Uh, is that for the building only? No, for the property. For the property. For the yeah. Further discussion from the floor? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. Uh, next agenda item is agenda item number 10. This is the water contract for the town li library, uh, the HVAC system. This is the air conditioning uh, system at the, at the library. If you remember, we, we heard a while ago about the situation, the condition, uh, what they had to work with over there in the summer. I think Sean brought it to my attention that it was a a very complicated system, and it, uh, they suffered over there in the summer in the library, so. We received uh, CDI, the architect for the project, we put together specifications and a plan. We went out to bid, and we received four bids. The low bidder was Healthy Air Solutions, Sam Adam Norwell, for $138,900. Um, CBI checked their references, a number of the references, and we found them to be very, very good. Mm. Kind of nice to have a local, fairly local outfit to do, do the work. Um, and as you said, Mr. Norton, this, the funding for this was not at the last time it was at the previous town meeting. It's taken quite a while to do the, the plans for this, for this particular project. Um, probably 
good thing that the price payment is such a mm. great price <laughs> and a lot less than the engineer's estimate and less than the money that we had appropriated. So I think the money that we have currently is something like $190,000. And so we're doing this uh, for 130000 I don't anticipate much in the way change for it. Which was what, Rick? The alternate was to do the ductwork in the unfinished area, and I think he came in at twenty something thousand dollars, which we thought was off the time. Maybe it was thirty thousand. Thirty. Thirty thousand, yeah. So we felt that we could do do it for a lot less than thirty thousand dollars. My guess we thought we'd do it for half that much. So it does pay to hold off on things sometimes, yeah. right? Sometimes it does pay to hold off. Right. Uh, Can I just add? I, oh, no, Rick had his hand up, and then yeah, you're right. okay. yeah, rough time frame. If this is awarded, uh, just I'm asking, just because it's been a long process so yeah, far, you know. I would say that we should get the contract signed within the next couple of weeks, and um, <coughs> it depends upon how long it takes for, with the lead time is for the units. I don't know that. Okay, great. No. Top of my head. Thanks. Thank you. John. Rick, is it a little out of the ordinary that? The engineer made you know check these references no. like this. All right. We we have have the check All right. Okay. Not that the fact that they came in at the price they came in or. Well, they you know, what they do is they, they go to the various other architects and contractors and say maybe general contractors and say what kind of luck they have with these guys. These guys they come in apparently from the from the letter. If you read the letter, they. they very good reference. I, well, the, I did, and that's what almost sent up a red flag. I just want to make sure it's done right. And like Rick said, it needs to be done tomorrow or the next day because they've been suffering through these summers, and it's not an easy job, oh, as I, I, as I yeah. was told. Because the windows don't, I don't, they don't open the way the building is well, structured. Well, just the way the whole yeah, mechanical system was designed. So I just... Yeah hope it's done you know it's great someone from Norwell's going to do it that's awesome so my point sort of implied was I'd hate to have this brand new uh, air conditioning system show up and get involved in like September late November <laughs> you know well, for the winter <laughs> yeah it's, a it's not just nice. yeah it's good yeah, uh, further discussion seeing none a motion move that the Board of Selectmen vote to award the contract for the HVAC replacement at the library to Healthy Air, Norwell, Massachusetts, for the low bid of $138,900. Second. A second. I uh, have a motion and a second. Further discussion? Seeing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 That's unanimous. Thank you. We did uh, number 11 earlier. We'll now get to discussion, vote, appointment, town administrator. This is a way of background for anyone who doesn't know. Uh, we spent three, four months, uh, three months anyway, going over resumes and close to 50 of them, narrowing down to, uh, I think it was nine or 10 semi-finalists, interviewing those uh, nine semi-finalists, coming up with four finalists who we interviewed uh, last week here. Uh, we were very fortunate that uh, we feel we had a, an excellent group of, of candidates, an excellent pool to choose from. Uh, I don't know what's going to happen, but uh, we feel confident that the people that we interviewed in the finals were four of the finest candidates around, so we're very happy with the, with the results of, uh, of the search. So with that, I'll entertain a motion. I'll move that the Board of Selectmen vote to appoint Patricia Vincasey as the new town administrator subject to a negotiated contract sas satisfactory to both parties. Second. A motion has been made and seconded uh, to nominate uh, Patricia Vincasey as the new situate town administrator subject to negotiations. Discussion from the Board. Rick. Yeah, I, um, I support this motion in a second. I would just like to add briefly um, and, f and confirm, you know, I completely agree with what Mr. Norton said. 
long process, great applicants. I think the second round of interviews that we had two weeks ago um, provided further information. And uh, just to remind people, we that was the second interviews, and so we had investigated all those candidates' views on, on many, many things that we didn't end up talking about in public because we'd already talked to them about some of the nitty-gritty of finances and, and so on and so forth. But I enjoyed the uh, interviews last couple of weeks, two couple weeks ago, and uh, I was very impressed with all of them. And uh, tough decision um, because they all were good, and I'm not just saying that lightly. People know me well enough to know I'm not just going to say things like that. These were all really good candidates, and uh, I'm very, very happy um, and hope that we can close the deal with uh, Trisha Vincesi. So I think it's a great motion and a great second, and uh, hopefully let's move forward. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Tony, who yeah, I, um, I agree. I think she was a very, very strong candidate. I think she has the financial background that the town's going to need to get through the next uh, several years. Um, I was concerned with her commute, and I think she put that at bay when she uh, um, said she was going to move here and, and um, rent here temporarily and, and move here shortly thereafter. So I thought that was a, a big commitment from her. Um, and I think she has a leadership um, qualities that are that will help us um, continue to move our town in the right direction. So I support that nomination, and I think it's a, a great uh, a great choice for the town. John? Well, not to repeat everything they said, but it was a tough decision, and it was even a tougher decision because the candidates we had to choose from were that good. So, I, you know, to the, all those people that we didn't choose, you know, it, it was they're good candidates. They're great candidates. Someone said it what, last two weeks ago, you know, how do we know if we made the right decision? I guess we will if she's here for 20 years, then like Rick, then we made the right decision. So, you know, I, I hope I hope that, uh, you know, we made the same decision you were part of making, Joe, 20 years ago, you know? And I'm not just saying this because Rick's sitting across from me, but uh, you made a good decision, Joe, and hopefully this one is equally as good. John? Thanks. Um, you know, um, there's a saying that says uh, to change and to change um, for the better are two different things. I think it's fair to say that, you know, this board has gone forward for the past six months uh, after Rick had made his announcement uh, that he was looking to step down, uh, has put out, um, you know, obviously um, notices. Uh, they've gone through, and I know myself, we've gone through a multitude of, of resumes to try to find people who were qualified to begin with, as well as to see um, whether, you know, they would be a good fit uh, for the town. And, um, you know, a lot of time has been put into it, a lot of review, a lot of extra, shall we say, research has been done, I know, on my front. And I have to say every board member, all the brothers up here who are sitting here, have done a very thorough job of trying to vet out uh, the candidates who are good for the town but who are also um, you know, will be good for the employees who are working this town. Um, clearly, this new person, uh, Patricia, has um, large shoes to fill, uh, and Rick. Um, and I have to say that it has been a joy uh, to go through this process, and I have to say, looking at her credentials and looking at what she has been able to accomplish in her career has certainly been, um, um, shall we say, um, exciting because I think those credentials and her prowess will be well served here in this town. I think um, looking at that going forward, you know, the major concern I had is, as every other board member had, about this potential commute and whether or not she was going to commit. And I have to say this was raised in the first round um, as well as other issues and um, we were thoroughly bowled over and convinced in the first round and put her into the second round. Um, I thought when she sat before us, she certainly uh, addressed that question pretty adroitly and said, you know, she's going to be committing to move here and she looks forward to it as well as saying her family, why is she going to be commuting back? Uh, why not have the family come visit here? And I think that defines or tells her that she's willing to make that vested interest uh, to the town. Um, so I'm excited, as every other board member is. I um, want to say, though, while it's exciting in some respects to have a new town administrator for the sake of change, it's not for the sake of change. It's for the better. And that doesn't diminish the prior town administrator. And I don't want Rick or Richard Agnew to take that because, 
You know, um, there's a saying from Winston Churchill who used to say that we make a living of what we get. But I have to say, you know, uh, Rick has literally um, made a life of what he has given to this town for the past 20 years. And, you know, I haven't said too much in the past, but I have to say I actually am going to miss Rick. Um, it's exciting to have somebody new come on board. <laughs> well, I miss that, and I also miss the banter and the, 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 the things back and forth. But you've done a wonderful job for this town, and, you know, regardless, there's always people who may say positive things and negative things, but the past 20 years that you've served this town, you've served it m more than, uh, than well. Um, you know, frankly, I'm sure people who've lived here for that time period can look around and say, what was this town like 20 years ago? Uh, you've had a profound effect on it. You've had an imprint and a positive one, I might add. And um, I've been here for the past 10, and I commend you, and I hope that uh, Patricia can fill those shoes and certainly put her own print, imprint the way that you've done. And, and so I thank you for your service, and I know that you've got one more meeting with us, but um, I just want to say it's been a great process. Miss you, but I also look forward, and hopefully that uh, we can get something with, with Patricia going forward. Thank you. Thank you. And, uh it looks like this will be unanimous because I feel very much the same way and I have felt very much the same way about about the, uh, the candidate uh, and now the proposed town administrator, Patricia Vincesi. Uh, she impressed me from the beginning. Uh, she, she just uh, just said the right things and seemed to have the right answers for the questions we, we, we put forth to her. Uh, taking nothing away from the other candidates. I think when this process started, I think we all <coughs> felt that we would have a very, very uh, difficult job choosing a town administrator. At least in my mind, it was what I was thinking of was was a difficult job going through the resumes and picking out you know the good ones and hoping we don't make a mistake and hope we don't, that I didn't overlook something and trying to make sure that we had that the best four or five candidates for the final, uh, uh, final uh, interviews, et cetera. Little did I realize uh, at the time, at least I didn't think of it, that the biggest problem, I think, and, and that certainly was turned out to be a lot of work, but not necessarily a problem. The biggest pro thing that I noticed during the whole process is how difficult it was to replace Rick Agnew. I don't think I had given that a lot of uh, thought prior to getting into it. But as we get into it, and, and I listen to people, and I read resume, I, I think I became uh, more conscious of the fact that we've had a good one. We've had someone here for a long time. We've had here someone here for, for over 20 years. But that only tells half the story. Uh, Situate's a very, very desirable place to live. Uh, it's been that way for a long time. And in no small part, it's due to the leadership uh, of Rick Agnew. So, not only was the decision difficult to make because of the, the, the abundance of good character, uh, uh, characters, good candidates, maybe, they were maybe some of that characters, I don't know, uh, but also because we have big shoes to fill. So, Rick, that's a public kudo to you and thank you. Uh, having said all that, uh, I think that our choice was an excellent one. I, I, I think it's going to be, uh, she is someone that I envision m moving forward and and bringing us into the next era of uh, the situate faces. And I, I look forward to, to working with her and, and having her work with the people in town. And I think that department heads uh, will find her uh, very agreeable with an open door policy. I think that residents will find her uh, very eager to, to try to help uh, solve their problems of all possible. So I think that Situate is going to continue uh, to be a very desirable place for people to live and to want to move to. Having said all that, any discussion from the floor? Seeing none, we have a... I just, I had a chance to briefly mention this to Rick Murray this morning, uh, today. Um, and I have been away and not heard much of this. Um, my question is, are you all confident that she will be able to get up to speed very quickly on um, coastal issues, on dealing with the issues of a coastal town? It's a, you know, I think we, we to answer your question, yes, we are, because we're, com you know, we're I think we're all confident in her overall ability to do whatever is required of her. 
I'm sure there are coastal issues that, that she's not that familiar with being from inland. Uh, but there are other issues that, that uh, she, are new to her and she'll, she, she did have situations up in, uh, I think it was South Hadley, where she dealt with disasters of a, a water nature, I think it was a dam or something. Rick, are you? The only thing I want to add is that uh, even though I've been on the coast all my life, um, I still depend upon the DPW to have the police chief and the fire chief and all of the other people to the department heads uh, to help give me what direction I need. Quite frankly, in most cases where you have a disaster or a storm, I sit at home and listen to the weather report like everybody else does. And the police chief, the fire chief, and they're all awake and they're all out there doing their doing their I, I think so, I think she mentioned, and the board can correct me if I'm. Uh, if my memory's not correct, I think she mentioned something very really close to that, that she would depend a lot uh, on the professionals. a lot of her decisions on police chiefs, DPW heads, town. I wasn't thinking yeah. just in terms of disasters, just that to me there were so many special issues in the coastal. You know, there are, and we feel, you know, we feel that confident that she'll be able to handle them. Okay. Yeah. Any comments from the board on that? Rick? I agree Tony? completely. Yeah, as I, as I said to... Uh, Mrs. Doby earlier today, she, she's got the wherewithal. She also, um, I think we asked her that in her first interview in general, how does she feel? And, and in addition to knowing enough about some of the issues, I was drawn to the fact that she understood the process and, and knew how to manage such situations, both acute situations as well as chronic situations. She, she's got the skill set necessary to learn and the skill set necessary to apply. We, uh, during the past week, we checked the references of not only her, but some of the other candidates. And uh, we still have a few to go, especially with her now that she's been, now that I know that she's the, uh, the candidate of choice. Uh, but everyone we spoke to in the board fed the information back to me on the different references of the different candidates. Couldn't have been uh, heaping more praise on her for, for, for her abilities to handle just about every type of situation. And, and uh, I guess the, the sense that I got, she, she just, when she, when she commits to, to something, whatever it might be, whether it be a town or a project within that town, she commits 100%. So, uh, I'm, uh, you know, I, I'm glad the, the, the vote turned out the way it did tonight because uh, I think she's gonna do a great job. We haven't voted yet. <laughs> yeah. Well, when we do vote, which will be right now. <laughs> uh, I've heard, I've had a, uh, a motion. We've had a second. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. Good job, everyone. Uh, excuse me. Thank you, Kim. I too. hope you're not going <laughs> to. We don't. Uh, you want to take a quick break or? Uh, no, we only got one thing left. Okay. So it's, uh, next item is uh, resignation from the Recreation Commission. Move that the board of Sarkin vote to accept the resignation of Michael Connor from the Recreation Commission and further that the board thank Mr. Connor for his service on the commission in the town of Situate. Second. Uh, discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Other business? Just a quick, quick, can we send a thank you to Mike? Uh, I, I yes, do we know usually him, do, Just Because right? Mike did a great job. Other business? Other business. That would you, Mr. Murray? Sure. Uh, Mr. Chair, we received um, a letter from CLE Engineering bringing to our attention the environmental notification form regarding the first Herringbrook pedestrian bridge. And it's drawing attention to the fact that there's a, a public comment period that's going to end on June 30th, 2009. And I just wanted to bring this to the board's attention to see what, if anything, the board um, would like to do. Good point. Uh, we, we voted, we did not support this project when it came before us. Uh, am I correct, Mr. Mike? I believe so. I, think, I believe that's accurate. Uh, I think you're right. Yeah, we did not support it. I guess I, the natural thing to do, as far as I think, would be to write, write, a, write a letter to that effect, saying we haven't, didn't support it. That'd be my thought. Why? Uh, 
I mean, other, other than financial reasons, I, I don't know if there are any other. I remember. I'd have, I to, remember. Sh I'd have to check the, the, the minutes to see why we didn't. I think the, the uh, feasibility of it was brought up, the, the need for it, uh, the distance. I remember the cost. The cost was a factor. I think there was there's some talk about at the time uh, that at certain tides, the bridge would be underwater, or part of the bridge would be underwater. I think this, I'm doing this from memory, so. Okay. Uh, okay. Fine with that. So maybe, okay. Kim, you could pull out the minutes. Yes. And you and I could put together a letter. I say you and I. Kim usually does it. <laughs> so. It sounds good to say you and I. <laughs> Mr. Chair, if I, if I, yes. if I could, I got a couple quick things. Um, we received a letter from South Shore Recycling Cooperative about the, the, the new uh, bottle bill, and I saw that. Yep. There was a little bit of email going around on that, and I didn't know what, I mean, just like before, I don't know what, if anything, we wanted to do about that either. I think we want to, well, I don't know, if we want to, does the board feel that it's, it's, it's worth, uh, worthy of a letter supporting it? Uh, it's, it's certainly. I do. Rick, you want to give a quick synopsis? Um, well, yeah, it's basically a renewal of the bottle bill and, and going to expand, um, expand its scope a little bit, and I don't, Kind of catching me right on the spot. Tony. No, I, well, I just yeah. read it. It, it yeah. expands it uh, to include more bottles. Yeah. So particularly with more types of yeah, yeah. non-carbonated drinks as well. So you've got uh, vitamin Bottled waters water. and all these other things that yeah. aren't your water bottle. Yeah, there exactly. So these are all now being thrown in trash, and um, uh, they're filling up the landfills. They're not being recycled, so the town can make money on it as well as the state makes money on it because. The nickel that you pay goes to the state, and a large percent of them are not, never redeemed. So the state is supporting it as well. Um, uh, you know, just for the green effort, it seems like certainly the right thing to, thing to do. Thing to do. Yeah. So I, do we have to write see, a letter? I don't see any downside in supporting right. it, certainly. No, I just think. I don't know if there's, there's not a sample letter there, is there? Um, no, but they say who to send it to. and. Another one, I'm sure this another be one Kim and I will write. This need not be a, a, a long one, but just sort of saying we're supporting. Busy, Joe. Uh, gonna I'm going to be busy writing these. Then just, then just see, seeing the, uh, I read, I, re I read in tonight's ledger, today's ledger about the uh, the new uh, Comcast, and with John there in the back, um, and it reminded me that we had discussions about when this new contract was coming up about potentially televising, zoning, planning, and. Oh, Concom, mm -hmm. those three. And I don't know if there's been any further discussion of, of that and how we would go about doing that. Are you the liaison? Yeah, I, um, we met uh, Rick and Vinny and myself and John met maybe a month ago or several weeks ago to talk about what the next steps would be to start incorporating that stuff. And it seems like we're almost there. Um, yeah, we're, we're getting closer. I mean, we have a budget. Now we have a proposed budget. It's not a great right. Yeah. Uh, right, no, that's great. I just wanted to make sure that didn't fall off yeah. the radar. That was one of the goals that we talked about to get up and going pretty okay. pretty quickly. So, um, and now that we have someone that can actually come and run the equipment, that's a step a step in the right direction. Right. And lastly, Mr. Chair, and this will be last. Um, I know Mr. Danahy would be disappointed if I didn't mention waterways. I just wanted to tell the committee that uh, they have a new chair, um, John Murphy, mm -hmm. who's taking over from from Hallie Krutzberg. And as we all voted last time, I'll still be the the liaison by wanted to bring that to people's attention. Kreutzberg's done a great job, and um, and Murphy's been very active the last two or three years on the committee, and uh, I'm looking forward to working with him. Great. And again, I just had to say waterways, John. <laughs> That's it, Mr. <laughs> Chair. <laughs> uh, Tony, if I may just jump in. We have been invited uh, by, by Cable to uh, take a trip down the week after next and uh, to Plymouth to see the studio and I, I committed that I would go down and any other board member that would like to join us uh, will pick a date, as I say, the week after next and maybe go down either early in the morning, sometime, and, and take a look at this. Uh, in your convenience, the, the woman who is the executive director down there is very friendly and, and uh, basically started a station from her car. And she, mm -hmm. you know, she, uh, we've been in touch with her over the last couple of weeks and actually took a tour. And she said, you know, if, if you want to bring people down, you know, take a look. And I think I, I think that'll be great, and so so I'll try to pick a date. We'll try to coordinate it with people who might be available. Is that Pine Hills, Rick? No. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.
Thank you, John. We don't need school buses. We only have about five. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Relentless. Tony, <laughs> other than the... Yeah, just a, a quick uh, update. I was at the uh, school committee meeting last night and um, just uh, wanted to just kind of update them on our financial forecasting meeting where we had discussions that if the House's or the Senate's budget got passed now that both the town and the school side would be, um, you know, would have a, have you know several hundred thousand dollars worth of money to additional money to have to come up with and um, I saw that before that they were in executive session talking about their um, negotiations with the PTA or STA and um, asked them how that was coming along and apparently that has uh, is not coming along very well um, they've gone back and forth um, a number of times and at this point I, the impression I got was that it's it's not going to work. They haven't accepted any of the offers that the, the school committee has made. Um, I was very disappointed to hear that that it wasn't moving forward, that it seemed like the other unions had agreed to a 0% freeze in that one year, and, uh, and this union was had not agreed to that yet. So I think it's very important for these two groups to get back together and make something work that is going to be fiduciary responsible for the town. and. Um, make sure that the 40 FTEs that are going to have to be missed in that budget um, do not go away because our school um, and our educational quality will suffer tremendously. So um, that was kind of what came out of that meeting. That's a teacher's union. That is a teacher's union, yep. And also, as we all know, that the, the current union negotiations that we're doing here, you know, they're all watching what each other's doing. So um, so anyways, that was that was disappointing to me and I think to the school committee that that had not been worked out and again um, I think the parents that were in the audience were, were disappointed as well and hope that uh, we can get these sides back together again thank you Tony John well Tony on that same vein I actually have I hope to think is good news um, you know I've talked to uh, two of the stewards for two of the unions um, the um, clerical as well as the um, managerial uh, unions on the town side and I have to say both stewards are prepared to go to their unions and uh, they're well aware right now of the financial condition the town is in and they're looking to try to give back to the town to help the town through the situation in an effort to try to avoid any um, layoffs and I have to say that is great news to hear that you know people are on the town side are willing to try to work with us through this financial difficulty um, they've mentioned that you know in the event that we get to a point where we have to furlough uh, they're willing to give an unconditional um, commitment to continue to work for this town and during that furlough time to come to work not get paid and I have to commend them for it I commend the stewards I commend those employees who are willing to work with the town and these the people of this town through financial crisis I only wish others could take that example and go forward with it um, also, uh, two other, a few other issues I wanted to address for the board. Um, the housing um, trust, uh, affordable housing trust met. Uh, they'd like to come before the board at uh, next meeting, whether it's the next one or the one thereafter, to talk about potential surplus property that the town owns to see if uh, we could maybe uh, propose to um, move that property into the affordable trust. And so uh, they'd ask that I'd raise it at this meeting. Um, the other issue was that I had received some phone calls from some neighbors in the West End. Uh, recently, there was an accident at the intersection of Route 3A and Man Lot, and this was an intersection that's been very dangerous, uh, a loss of life some years ago. Uh, again, to try to ask the board for its support to go on their behalf, uh, they'll do it on their own, but to go to try to see if uh, Mass Highway would put a, a traffic light at that intersection. So um, that you might be expecting that in the future. Um, the only other thing I had, two other things briefly, um, Chief Stewart had asked uh, me to at least um, inquire of the board if they're interested, if they would like to, uh, anybody on this board would like to go with the uh, police officers on July 3rd uh, to uh, experience, you know, what happens in this town of Situate on the, uh, the eve of the 4th of July. And, um, I, I'm not a betting person, but I wouldn't take a bet with the chief because I'm afraid that there's going to be a lot of uh, havoc going on. So he would like any of the board, if they'd like, just the way that Al asked about people coming in the plow trucks during the winter, to take a ride to see what goes on. Um, 
and it's probably very safer to go plowing. Um, but I felt that's a, it's, I'd like to take them up on that. I won't be able to this year, but I, 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 I certainly anybody else would, they should. Um, the last question I have, and I wish Al was here, what the heck's going on with the roundabout? They, they were digging up the cement oh, and then putting down cement there. again. I mean, what are they doing? I don't know why they did it, but when they, when they initially did the cement in those islands, they only put a couple of inches in An oversight, you know. <laughs> that was a no. That always happens. Right. 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 Say it ain't so. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Chair. You're welcome, Sean. At least yeah. the grass was cut. That's was cut. you can see across. <laughs> the right. Yeah. I just had one thing I mentioned it to either John or Joe earlier. If you recall, a couple of months ago, I had mentioned about a farmers market and some yeah. local people really want to get this going so I spoke to Neil just briefly about it and got his thoughts on whether they should do it in private land or on public property so I will with Joe's permission ask some of those people to come before at our yeah. next meeting they can give you their ideas and thoughts at the same time I would direct them to talk to Neil Neil believe it or not thought for reasons I'll let him explain, it'd be better if they were on public property versus private because of um, bylaws and so forth. So yeah, they were thinking. Kim can take a look at yeah. the agenda. We have a, I think we all got the schedule for the summer. Uh, could they go on the next meeting? Be just because it's, uh, if they could. Check that with Kim. Okay. I think that'd be great. Uh, other towns are doing it. It's yeah. a way of bringing people yeah. together and, yeah. you know, kind of neat. Kind of neat. So, uh, did someone, Norm, did I miss you? Um, going back to the negotiations with the teachers' union, historically, all of the state unions have consistently not gone back and wanted to renegotiate the contract once they were signed. But what happened recently, and just a uh, few weeks ago, uh, Rockland decided to do that. And I think something went on in those negotiations that I think we could learn from. And maybe the, the board could recommend to the school committee that uh, they get in touch with the town of Rockland to see what they did. Well, I'm sure the school committee is doing, you know, everything that they uh, know how to do. I, I, we've been very... I guess good over the years, you know, not trying to interfere, and I, I, I trust them. But I think you're absolutely right. I think they're aware of the Rockland. I think uh, I won't I won't say some other town, but I think there's another local town that did it also. Did it also. Uh, having said that, uh, any further other business? Any correspondence, John? Uh, anything? Oh, jeez, that's right. Thank you, Tony. Uh, Do we have any correspondence? I'll no. read it. If there's anything? Nope. There's nope. nothing. Just All of that up. Oh, wait a minute. Actually, there is. There, there hang, is on, one. hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Okay. Important stuff. This is the Division of Marine Fisheries um, to the Slackman and to the Town of Citrus. I think maybe you can summarize that. I will. I will. I'm going to. If this is the closing closing the bottom line is uh, <laughs> the. Um, is it? They are closing. The areas that are going to be closed uh, for, to the harvest of all bivalve shellfish and carnivorous snails with the exception of the sea sca scallops. And so bottom line is they're closing the, uh, the, the, the um, beds, the, sh the shell beds. How's that? Not unusual, Kim. We did get that. I, uh, yes, I got that too. Uh-oh, I'm falling down on the job. <laughs> it would be it's good. Um, Thank you. Saturday. Got the it. 16th at 9 a.m., is that correct? No, yes. it's the annual harbor cleanup day. Situate Harbor. It's Saturday, June 13th. 13th. Meet at the Harbor Master's office at 10 a.m. to 3 p.m., rain or shine. And you gotta go till, you know, rain or shine because they're gonna be having pizza and soda at the end. So you gotta show up at the end. So show up at 3.05, <laughs> uh, pizza and soda. 
and um, again, just help keep Situate Harbor clean. I have to say, yeah, it, it gets very deplorable and disgusting. A lot of it from the backwash, uh, I assume from the storms, I'd like to think. But um, any event, please go down and help Thank clean you. your harbor. Thank you. Uh, minutes. minutes. Move the board of selectmen vote to accept the minutes of May 27th, 2009. Second. Made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, and finally, adjourn. Move to adjourn. Yeah, I was going to ask you. Second. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. 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 Good night, folks. No applause.